Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. And I'm in the studio with the amazing, incredible, talented East St. Louis's own Tori Deshaun. Give it up for the boy. What's up, man? What's good, Ace? How you, how you feeling, bro? Man, I feel good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Looking, I looking, good. I mean, you looking good, bro. You got the you got the bees, you know what I'm saying? Got the got the drip. That's my stilo now. I mean, you know I mean? yeah. I, I mean, I think when you talked about it, when you first had like got them, I think not just me, probably seemed like everybody around you was like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was like the yeah, this was like the one thing that we did first. Yeah. Uh for the the joint that kind of like blew up yeah, on Instagram. For sure, yeah. And so, yeah, I turned into a whole new artist. Yeah, you you kind of you kind of you kind of went on a rebrand, yeah, I, which yeah. I, I think is dope. Yeah, we can get into dope. that later cuz it's probably well, we got so much to cover. How you feeling today though, man? man? I feel good. I I slept good, man. ATL is like my second home, so Hey, I love I love hearing that. Shout out to Atlanta, you know, the greatest city on the earth. <laughs> um <laughs> you know, the capital of hip hop. Even though it's not good, looking good right now in these hip hop streets, but <laughs> Tori Deshaun's here to to save the day, to redeem it, get to get it back right. Yeah. Um, I know, I know, me, me, and you've been knowing each other for a minute. Um, I want to say probably like four year, four or five years now. What you yeah, think? Like, yeah, almost five. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That's a minute. Mm -hmm. So, um, for the people who've been living under a rock, um, just talk to you know a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you from, like just Tori Deshaun. Shout out your last name. We got the same last name, y'all. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. You know? It's my cousin, man. Hey, the fact that you, the fact that you said cousin over uncle makes me proud. So. <laughs> <laughs> like some people, it's the other way around. So, no. Nah, um, but man. yeah, tell, yeah, tell tell people where you from, man. Like what got you here? Just upbringing, just the whole backstory. I think people would love to hear more about you because they see all this dope stuff you're doing. They hear your music, and they just want to know more about Tori Deshaun, the artist, the person. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tori Deshaun. Mm -hmm. Tori Deshaun Harris, uh, St. Louis. Yes, sir. East St. Louis. So look, so look. That's, yeah, yeah. Just break, break. Because I, I yeah. feel like I be, I be confused. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So East St. Louis, uh, Illinois is a is a city within itself. Okay. Uh, so it's East St. Louis, Illinois, and then it's St. Louis, Missouri. Hold on. So uh, East St. Louis is not in Missouri. Mm -mm. East St. Louis is in Illinois. Two different I'm cities. So lost, two right? different cultures. Uh, we it's it's weird. It's kind of the same, but it's not the okay. same. Uh, it functions like one city. Okay. How how far is it from actual St. Louis? Like three minutes. Like oh, so yeah, it's right there. It functions like one city. Okay. Like the functionality, you going to work, family members on both sides. Sure. It functions like one city, but it's split. Illinois and Missouri is split by the Mississippi River. Gotcha. So you like the Mississippi River completely split the states. So East St. Louis is in Illinois, and St. Louis is in uh, Missouri. Missouri. And East St. Louis actually wasn't called uh, East St. Louis at first. It was Illinois town, like way back okay. before St. Louis was even St. Louis. I think I'm a fact check that, but I think yeah, Illinois town was its own was its own thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know how it got the name East St. Louis, but yeah, two completely different That's cities. That's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. The yeah. ignorance of me was thinking all this time when you, when you were saying East St. Louis, I was thinking that literally the east side, the east side of, of St. Louis when yeah. really... I know, I, I, like, I always... <laughs> like, I am I the only person that was doing that or like... <laughs> no, I see people like kind of like look at me and wonder why I kept saying East St. Louis. They'd okay. be like, why he keep... It's like, I'm from North Atlanta. It's oh, like, yeah, no, yeah, why yeah. he keep specifying like... The, the, re the, dire the region The direction of and region of yeah. where he from. It's like, no, nah, it's because it's a whole, a whole nother city. And I think the differences between them are uh, one has more of a... Uh, both kind of like from the Great Migration, like mm. from Mississippi History lesson and, right here, and the South. Yeah, from Mississippi and the South. My great grandmama came up from Mississippi, and yeah. a lot of the other like people from St. Louis, same thing in Chicago. But yeah, East St. Chicago Louis, for sure. Yeah, yeah from East St. Louis got more of a Chicago ish okay. influence. Yeah, and uh, St. Louis. So for instance, I'm gonna get deep into no, like, it. This, this is good. St. Louis. Gangs is different than East St. Louis gangs. So East St. Louis got a lot of GDs and Vice Lords, kind of like, like Chicago yeah. gangs. And St. Louis got a lot of the LA gangs. So Bloods, Bloods Crips, Crips. Okay. You know, all that. Okay. Uh so the politics is a is is different. Uh some of the lingo is a little different. Yeah. Uh but 
you might hear it mixed in East St. Louis. I'm assuming they all don't get along, basically. We, it's a love hate relationship. Okay. So, you so know. tell me about what, what was it like growing up in East St. Louis across the Mississippi? I mean, yeah. like, were you, were you, like, where in the, where were you? Like, were you in, like, the suburbs? Like, the, yeah. Like, talk a little bit about, like, your real upbringing, like, what yeah. it looked like, you know what I'm saying? So, in East St. Louis, East St. Louis is only like, 25,000 people. Okay. And East St. Louis don't have a suburbs, like the whole city to hood. <laughs> so wow. there there is no suburbs. There is no good part. There is no Wow. There is no like part where you get away from the madness like the whole city to hood. It's it's uh it's only 89 blocks. So uh I'm from 38th Street. I'm from the middle of East St. Louis. And so yeah, it was it was it was going down where I was where I was at. When you so, when you say going down, what what does that look like? What tell me, give me yeah. some specifics. So like, what did you see growing up, and what kind of environment was that for you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, just a lot of a lot of shootings, a lot of yeah, a lot of killing, a lot of drug dealing, a lot of you know, a lot of my family was on drugs. A lot of my family, you know, the the crack era hit hit real hard. And a little bit of the history behind East St. Louis mm-hmm. is that. Um, like the race riots, like this race riot popped yeah. off in East St. Louis like a long time ago. Right. And and uh some some specific popped it off. I'm gonna do my research on it a little bit more before yeah. I just spew it in front of the yeah. but uh but uh basically the the first gangs in East St. Louis was like uh uh some of these white dudes who would get like real drunk uh-huh. and like go and like kinda like cocktail, like, you know, it was it was East St. Louis was kinda split. Cause at first it was it was mostly white. East right. St. Louis was mostly white at first, and um, it was a thriving city. It was the fourth biggest city in Illinois. It had like ninety thousand people, eighty oh. some thousand people, something like that. Mm. And uh, it was thriving at first, but then these these race riots happened, and a lot of the businesses, uh, like black people, started fighting back, and then yeah. they started fighting, and then. Uh, a lot of these businesses, yeah. the General Motors, the stuff they, that like it was like out, we out. It was like, all right, we out, and they and they went to well, East they had Louis, the Chicago. they had the privilege of mm-hmm. getting out. But what about some of your family, your lineage? Yeah, it got left. You know what I'm and saying? And what did that do to the city and your upbringing? What did that leave y'all in? A, a lot of the crab in a bucket mentality. Like, yeah, all right, now you gotta, you just gotta survive. You gotta, you gotta get it how you live because it's no, it, it's not that many job opportunities. Sure, anymore, so so. so if you were a kid, if you're you're take me back to like middle school, are you like, are you doing good in school? Are you in trouble? Like yeah. are, are you like the quintessential, like, no yeah. pun, like good kid, mad city stuff? That's what yeah. the, that's what's kind of yeah. ringing out in my in my in my brain a little bit. Tell, talk to like talk about that. Yeah. My bird raised me in church. She raised me in she raised me in church. I I wasn't never no like <clears throat> no thug. I wasn't I wasn't like a I wasn't a gangster. I would like I know real gangsters. I wouldn't call myself a gangster. Okay. I just you know what I'm saying? I seen a lot, did a little bit. Like yeah. I was I was one of them kids, like I was always in church. She always kept us in church. It wasn't no option. It wasn't like Okay. You know, my my mama, she was real deal, like still is real deal, like like saved, like For real. She knew the Lord like, knows the Lord. Dancing was sinful, like type okay. type saved. It's like, like, it's like Kojic Baptist Pentecost yeah, kind of she all like Kojic <laughs> Kojic Kojic Baptist costume. Uh, like, uh, all she that. Was, she was real, real deal. And, and saved. Was, your, was your was your father around? What, 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 something, yeah. Something? So my pops, and it's funny. My pops was the exact opposite. He was the exact opposite of that. Like he was so you know. My hmm. mama, she was you know, she wasn't as innocent as you know. She was with my pops. My pops, he was. I found out later on in life what my pops used to do. Um, but. Uh, yeah, he just he just was off into some stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like Dill and, you know, got caught up in the whole game. You know how the how the eighties and nineties go. So oh, yeah. So, you know, he was you know, he was well known. And, oh, okay. You know, he was for, he was for, for maybe the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so Yeah. And so, you know, but he was he moved back to Mississippi where my where his mama stayed, uh, where my grandma yeah. is. And we more so had a phone relationship. I only seen my pops probably like two times my whole life. What? Yeah. And but he was he was there. He was there, but he wasn't there. Like he was he was there. Like he would you know the the normal stuff. Like yeah. he would 
My mama ain't want to let me play football. He like, you know, oh, convinced her to like let that. me play football. He'd but he wasn't like present in your life like yeah, that. Yeah, check and on me by my grades. The, like, you know what I'm saying? Send me money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He'll, he'll, do, he'll do the stuff that like. Yeah. That like. You suppose? The, the check, check in the boxes? The check the boxes. Yeah, I spend signs in. Yeah. I you think, know. I, do you feel like as a kid looking, or as a man, grown man looking back now, do you, do you, did you see, did you, um, felt like he could have been there more and, and ha- how has that influenced how you've yeah. been raised and grown up into you know when I was younger I, I used to like I really didn't care cause I cause I wasn't used to seeing him no way sure so it was like whenever <clears throat> he hit me up it was like I was happy I was super happy I was like oh that's, that's dad I get on the phone with him and but the more and more I get older the more and more I'm like you <clears throat> know you start seeing the sin and the response the responsibility and you like, hmm. you like, man, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, you start getting a little, a little more, a little more bitter. But my pops, yeah. Uh, my pops passed when I was when I was twelve. Uh, I still don't really know the full Sto- reason, okay. or the full story behind it. Uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a murder or nothing like that. Okay. Uh, it might have been an aneurysm or a heart attack, something like that. But uh, yeah, he died back in in um uh, in Mississippi. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was like when that happened. Yeah. I it really I didn't think it was going to hurt that bad cuz I cuz he wasn't like yeah. physically around me, but it wasn't until he was gone until it was like yeah. oh, I ain't got a pops. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, when you was like, so tell me tell me about your like um how did you so you were you always walking with the Lord? You were always around like the church. Yeah. You knew about the gospel. When did it like Hit you like yo, I I I know the Lord. Like what 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 point of your life did that come into place? Yeah, I would say for a long time. Like now that I look back on it, for for a little minute, church was like a culture. It was something that I always knew God exists, just because that was something that my that my people's everybody around me. It was like they they made sure that that was known. Like it was a God fearing fan. It was it's, you know it's weird in the hood sometimes where it's like. Everybody on demon time, but everybody know the Lord at the same time. <laughs> <That's> a, can <laughs> so, we just? <laughs> yeah, this demon time thing's getting out of hand. Yeah, I'm like, y'all know what y'all talking about, fam? Nah, ain't nobody on demon time. Ain't nobody on. <laughs> you, you, like, who? That's not something yeah. to aspire to be on. It's, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> and y'all demon time to, is like death time. Stop being on demon time, <laughs> please. Yeah, stop uh, being on demon time. Don't let demons put you on demon time because no. it's. <laughs> That's not the type of time you want to be on. It, 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 yeah. They ain't got that much time. They, they, demon me? time is not a lot of time. <laughs> they ain't got that much time left, so don't be on they type time. <laughs> <laughs> it's I ticking. See, I, can see, I can see an old granny hitting that, on that demon. They, they ain't got um, that much so, time left. So, like, when did you, like, when, when did the spirit hit you? When did, that, when did that moment happen where you felt like, this is less of a culture. This is like a way of life and yeah. a lifestyle. So yeah. growing up, I saw a lot of acting in church too. <laughs> Talk I saw about a it. lot of like, you know, like changing your voice when you get in the pulpit, like dressing up in church, then mm. getting out doing doing something else. And so for me, I go and I knew God exists, but it wasn't no real like conviction. So I was still off with my, you know, with my partners in the in the in the street doing doing little stuff. I wasn't doing a lot. Yeah. But you know, just doing more than probably like your average person who ain't like East St. Louis is real bad. So what I think ain't that much probably, you know, I don't know what it is to other people. So it's like, you know, I was off doing doing that kind of stuff, but I always had a reverence for God sure. and a reverence for my mom. So that that kept me out of a lot of trouble, trouble. that I could have got in. And so um I think it like when I was 16, shout out, shout out Mr. Tate, my teacher, man. He uh Shout out Mr. Tate. Mr. Tate from Chicago. And so and so he uh, he uh, um Pull up, yeah. pull up videos and um in, in math class, and Jackie Hill was the first rapper that I that I ever wow. uh, that I ever seen, first Christian rapper that I ever seen. She was doing her poem about weed, and so then the next person he pulled up was Cray, and so he had, in, in the is it public school? Yeah. So Mr. <laughs> so Tate, he was public school to be government <laughs> funded teacher, uh, separation of church and state. Yeah. Pulls up Christian hip hop artist Jackie Hill Perry and Lecrae. Mm-hmm. As why was he doing that? So he was just trying to give us like you know, they come from that like that air in, in Chicago. It's like that's a big scene. That's a big art city. Sure. And that was something that he really cared about. And Mr. Tate was a diehard Christian. 
he a diehard Christian, so it's like he was just trying to sow seeds mm. and you know into just, into us. And so I was that clown. I'd be in class like, man, this man, this week. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> but whole time I'm like, this yeah, they they nice though. I ain't I ain't gonna lie, they nice. And so I remember, like, long story short. In my bedroom, like God had been drawing me because five of my friends had all died from gang violence in like one what, summer. And what, how old are you at this moment? I'm like 15. Jeez. And so my friend, back of the head, my other friend mm. died in the car. My mm. other friend, uh, he got shot in the leg and his main artery mm. bled out. Mm. And so I'm like, man, I'm next. Five like, friends died in one summer. Yeah, it was real, it was real bad. And so I'm like, man, I'm next. And I remember coming from basketball practice. And this video popped up on my YouTube. Uh, it was recommended for you. And it was like, narrow is the way. And I was like, recommended for me. I'm watching it. And you know, it's all the heavy people. Paul Washer. I ain't know who none of these dudes was. Paul Washer, John Piper, all, all of these that. dudes. And so I'm like, man, they talking about how uh, you think you're a Christian because you grew up in church. church. But you're not just mm. because of that, just yeah. because of your association. You don't really know God. Like yeah. those who know God keep his commandments and they, you know what I'm saying? And if you really believe in Jesus, then and they landed on it. So I'm like, dang, I ain't no Christian. Like whole time I thought I was a Christian and I'm not no and so right there at the edge of my bed, mm. I just cried out, was like, you know, God, I'm sorry. Like mm. I'm That's you know, good, bro. I, I sinned against you and I wanna give my life to you. I believe in you. I believe Jesus paid for my sins. Mm. And I did that about fifteen times. Like <laughs> yeah, I got sinners prayers. I got ex, over ten, ex multiple. <laughs> you hear me? Uh, I got Hey man, we, we definitely wanna get into more on the next segment, man. This is having mm. a good time chopping up with you, man. This is the one one six life on Holy Culture Radio, Series Channel One Five Four. I'm here with my man Tori Deshawns, and we're just catching up on his backstory. So stay tuned for more, y'all. Yeah. Welcome back. This is the One One Six Life on Holy Culture Radio, Series Channel One Five Four. I'm here with my my dog. Yes, sir. Tori Deshawn. Um. So yeah, we're just catching up to his back, your backstory. Um, Mr. Tate, your high school teacher, pitched you on to Jackie Hill Perry, Lecrae. Yeah. Talk a little bit about why he did that and why that connected with you, like. So. Like story about Mr. Tate, he, uh, you know, being from Chicago, we was, you know, we was always, um, I mean, Tate was just always super respectful to <clears throat> us, right. never lashed out at us, and I always wanted, like, I always knew it was something different about him, mm. but, um, yeah, he would, he would. Why like, was why was he different? What did he not do? He or? just he just wouldn't lash. He wouldn't be cussing us out like the other teachers. He wouldn't lash out at us. He wouldn't hmm. he wouldn't scream at us. He wouldn't like throw little demeaning remarks like some of the other teachers would. He he actually like helped us out. Like he like like overextended himself. And so that was like some of the stuff that I saw in him that yeah. I was like, why he like that? Um, and that that resonated with you? Like it like. It witnessed to me. I ain't know what that was in the moment, but it was like, I, like, mm. I want to be like, you know what I'm saying? I want to be like Tate. But the funny thing is, after that night that I had uh, got saved, uh, like, right after that night, like, I would start going to school. And I still, you know, it's still the same thing. Like, a lot, a lot of times you can't tell. A lot of people could tell because it was a lot of stuff that stopped for me. Mm -hmm. I slowly stopped like cussing as much. Mm -hmm. I started talking about God a little bit more. And people like I bro. Yeah, like you what lame, is he on? Bro. Like I yeah. Yeah, the girls like Yeah. You know, they I, I can't say what they were saying. But it's like, you know, I, I remember the the dance that I went to. And so the dance that I went to was like probably the most pivotal moment in like my my walk that I realized. Like Talk say more. Was, yeah, what what I happened? Was there, and we was all turning up. You know, Chief Keith was Keith was the man that when I was in school, he was him for real. Like he was he changed everything. Him, oh, Dirk, oh yeah, all of them. The drill scene just yeah, like exploded. Was, yeah, and, and we in East St. Louis, we adjacent to Chicago. So okay. it's like it's people like our city is connect like it's people from there at our school. And so we all turning up. I don't like, I don't like we all turning up. And I look around and everything just, everything slow down. Like, they like, I don't like, I see everybody going in slow motion, I'm looking. Really? And then for the first time, I feel mm. like I felt conviction. Like the Holy Spirit was like. He tapped you. That's not. That's, you're that's not, not part of this. Yeah, that's not you no more. And I mm. remember looking over at Tate, 
Tate was chaperoning, and he on the wall. Mm. And I look over at Tate, and he just smiling at me like he always, like he always be doing. Tate, I think Tate low key knew I got saved, like without knowing for real. But I walked mm. over there to him, and I was like, he was like, it's okay. And I just stood next to him for like the next three hours of the dance. I ain't, I ain't dance no more for the rest of the. I just stood next to him. Fast forward. The, a church plant happens in East St. Louis that I'm a part of. Tate comes along and he's a part of the church plant in East St. Louis. But look the, at God. This the catch though. Ah. He like Tory, like but it, I'm really walking with God now. You know what I'm saying? It, I'm 20 at this point. Uh, I'm not 17, 16. I'm 20, so I'm I'm really walking. He could see the difference. And he like man, what's? I'm catching him up. He like so what you doing now? Yeah, I had just <laughs> I had just started. Rapping. rapping and so I'm like uh I'm a Christian rapper <laughs> <laughs> why why is that like a struggle to say that it's like what you do what you do what you in his class oh yeah and so the irony is yeah, like yeah I'm like I was really Paul like I was Paul the <laughs> apostle like I was I was Saul of Tarsus in yeah. his class and now I'm part of but like shut up, shut up you know in your Bible by the way, but keep going. You feel so, me? Yeah. And so well, well read gentlemen, you know. Yeah, man. He like he was like when I told him that, he was like he was shook. He like, you would but I think it encouraged him like mm. uh seeing the result. Cause you know a lot of time we don't get to see the result of our work. But sure. God of discipleship. Him. Well God and, and that's him. that's a if I can pause right there, it's mm -hmm. like this is like a, a note for me and everybody out here who does evangelism, mentorship, training, raising up people in the faith. We at times want um, the t temporal or immediate credit or transformation, visible mm -hmm. transformation mm -hmm. for our own internal glory mm -hmm. to say, look what I did on this person. When really, if we're being honest, who does the work? We're just preach the gospel. Come on, pass Not the ace. force it on them. Not and and when somebody's really in the hands of the Lord, he'll convict and direct and transform at the pace that he sees fit for them. And we may not even see it on this until it turns. Like yeah, like that, that's that's the the tough part about ministry discipleship. S someone um, Scott Free was on this sitting right there a couple weeks ago, and, and he said something that really stuck with me. He said, "You know how you spell discipleship?" I said, "How you spell it?" He said, "T I M E," and I was like, mm. "Yeah." So. Dr. Mr. Tate didn't even know what he was doing, wow. but he was just being faithful to the Lord, planting seeds that literally were, were being watered through um, Christian hip hop, your conversion, and the spirit just was like, yo, come on through. You're one of us. Yeah. Look at you now, yeah. fam. No, it's crazy. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's um, so, crazy. So you found the Lord and you started, like, let's, talk, let's get into the music. I think yeah. people obviously are wanting to, yeah. but I think it's good for people just hear that backstory just to, Cause you have so much to offer. I'm like, when I hear your music, there's so much depth, um, and like poetry is a lot in there. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be a disservice for people to jump into the music without hearing like, yo, this is why Tori's the way he is. Um, yeah. You are like a good kid in a mad city. That's yeah. that's what I get from you. Yeah, like, like the Kendrick Lamar story for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. So you start rapping. Were you like trying to be like trying to get on? You, like, what were you? Why music? Like, what? How did that happen? Like, and what was your goal at the time? So funny, funny story. Like. The, the start of music was from, I made my first song when I was six with my cousins. Shout out my cousin Kelly and Shani Poo. I made my I made my first songs with them when I was six. It, really with Kelly, it was called Complicated Girls. Yeah. <laughs> when I was six years old. What do you know about Complicated you know <laughs> And so we made the song, but my cousin Shani Poo, she was, you know, we was, St. Louis is so close. Yeah. So she had a, um, when I was nine years old, she had a, a situation where she was friends with, uh, she was friends with one of the girls we went to school with, okay. and her cousin was Chingy, and so you know what I'm saying right there, right there, all that, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, she ended up linking with her. They was doing this group called the Get It Girls, yeah. And so I used to help my cousin Shani Poo with like some of her, some of her raps and stuff like that. She was writing them too, but I, I like help, I help, be yeah. and stuff. And so when he had. Like if he'd tell her like, "Oh, this hard." Like that was the first time I'm like, I'm young and I'm like, "Oh shoot!" Like you did that. I can rap. <laughs> like I can rap. And so fast forward, my uncle, my uncle was the one with the my fam. My whole family is like 
music, okay. just a music oriented family. Like yeah. one of my cousins, you know what I'm saying, was with Prince. Okay. Like allegedly. No, I'm playing. <laughs> He was with him. That's what he said. He was with him. That's what he said he at the cookout him. and so at I'm gonna Thanksgiving. Take him, I'm going to take now, him. Look. Now, what's the Prince, family verified him. I mean, they verified him. Like, no, nah, yeah. They he, did verify? They verified. Okay. But, but, uh. Yeah. Sometimes my uncle just be talking at the, yeah, at the cookout. Yeah, I, I know. I yeah, know. man. I used, I used the same background from Michael Jackson. <laughs> Fam, you lying. <laughs> you you was a roadie or something. <laughs> he was you was selling the merch. <laughs> he was selling the merch at one tour stop. <laughs> he, was a, he, was, he was a tour. He was a volunteer. <laughs> But man, bro, yeah. uh, like, like my whole family was music adjacent. Like my my aunt, yeah. Like rest in peace, my aunt. She 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 was the one who kind of got us into music, and um, yeah, like music was always with me. But sports was the way out okay. in East St. Louis, so sure. I started playing basketball and and football. But my big brother was the influence, was the real like big influence for me, yeah. like with music. Like the first song I ever learned word for word was Jesus Walks. That was my first yeah, ever not, like not a, not a bad song to learn. He'd come back from college <laughs> and just like wang that mug in his in his car. Like I'm riding around and I wanted to be my, like my big brother. My big brother name is Corey Shaman Harris. I'm Tori Deshaun Harris. So I'm just it's destiny. Your parents. I just wanted to be like one. yeah. I just wanted to. <laughs> she was man. You don't want to know what my name almost was. I ain't going I ain't gonna tell on her. <laughs> But I, out, I need to tell, to tell all that's, the a good, that's a good piece <laughs> I need to tell you What my I'll name was I'll all the black mamas who I'm going to tell you What my name almost was What, what, what was it? <laughs> Boopy? No, nah, it ain't me <laughs> So my, my name was almost uh, Fenardriana Tez Deviana Vondre Brother I don't know if that is a I don't know what I just heard I don't know if that's pig Latin or that, a, I don't I don't know what's I'm going let that on. Marinate. But I just want to say shout out to the black mamas them for the for the creativity. East St. Louis, East Boogie, we fly high, no lie. I don't know if we like the we goal multiply. was to like equip our kids with a lot of like literary uh, <laughs> challenges, so we are gonna make this the longest name ever to spell in first grade. But she the, wasn't thinking about me. The black mamas are just they just they y'all shout out all my black mamas y'all. All right, so. So yeah, music, music, music. Yeah, no, music. Let's, let's let's get into Christian hip. Like you, you rapping as a Christian, like <laughs> look, look, I can't even say yeah, it. Like yeah. I, I'm struggling. <laughs> hey, shout out all the comments on YouTube. Some of y'all one one six fans. Hey, you you can laugh, <laughs> but you can't. Be careful. The, the, be careful yeah, in the comments because I might I, might I might come for you. Ain't gonna be careful. Be, I'm just saying, right? You be feel careful. Me? I'm be St. Louis. Be careful. All right, all right. Um, did you so take sees you at? Um, the church. Did you know you were trying to be an artist then? Were you trying to pursue Christian? Were you doing service, ministry? Yeah. What, what were you doing so with that? I was just yeah. serving. I was just serving and I was in college. I had just recently left my other church. Okay. I was serving and um uh I had met my producer, Brett. Okay. That you Brett, that you yeah, met. yeah, okay. Yeah, uh Love Ain't Done Yet. So before he was Love Ain't Done Yet, uh me and him both ended up trying to like talk to these two girls you know yeah. we was young we was just trying to talk to these two girls but they was like hey you can't be a leader in the yeah. youth group if you talk to these girls just because we don't want no distraction that's cool if you want to pursue them we was like all right cool we gone so we left yeah. to pursue them girls so we got like <laughs> church discipline and so we was Hold like on, yo, to- <laughs> yeah we we was just you know young bad, and, bro. young and dumb man young and dumb shout out shout out my wife currently because i was just Janae's dumb. The truth. yeah Janae the truth but hey. but yeah um we left there went back to his house he was like man i heard you rap you know what i'm saying i was i heard you produce and so we just formed a bond we started doing music together first song was terrible the second song got me a sony distribution deal uh i hated that song but it got me a Sony distribution deal. Um, Your second song ever recorded? Ever ever recorded. And I just did it because, you know, our church was kind of like a mini, a min, like it was a big church. But I just did it for like some friends, some of the youth. And when it when it got, like when the track star, shout out to track stars, reached out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, man, God, like, is this what you want me to do? Right. And so I started praying, and the more and more I prayed, the more and more stuff started started happen. happening. And so I quit basketball. I was a uh, red shirted on my college basketball team, so I quit basketball, and um, I started I started hooping. Like I mean, I started I started um, doing music, doing music. I stopped hooping, started doing music. Man, I, so you you like at this time? So you're serving at the church too? Like what? Is it, I was serving at the church. Okay, like you were like 
an intern paid or like more like volunteer? More so like a Timothy to like a Paul. Like okay. so, my mentor name was Paul. Paul Fernandez. Okay. Shout out Paul Fernandez. Um, and I started you know rapping and 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 doing my thing like after I was serving there for a little bit. Yeah. And so that kind of that kind of took off. Um, and in the middle of that, that's when he was like. Um, Cause it's probably like twenty minutes away from East St. Louis. He was like, "Man, I feel like God is telling me you need to go back home and be in your city, uh, like and do ministry there. That's where He wants you at. I'm from Belleville. You from East St. Louis. You need to, you know." So you so you went back to East St. Louis. So this uh, my pastor now, my homie named Kempton Turner. He was playing a church uh, in uh, East St. Louis, Louis. Gotcha. and so I went back there right around the time I started rapping, and then rapping started taking off. The man. church started. And so all of this stuff started start happening, man. That was just like, I was like, man, this is what God want me to do. That's like, amazing. I, I feel like, yeah. I mean, we have so much to cover, but I just want to, like, I, I, I remember, your, this is maybe like 2018-ish. Mm -hmm. um, stuff started to kind of sizzle. Like, I started seeing you on, like, different blogs, and mm -hmm. your music was starting to kind of form an identity. And yeah. um, we was playing, Lecrae was playing, Lecrae was playing some of your project. I forget which project it was. Uh, it was Boopy. Boopy, yeah, yeah. okay. With the with the amazing cover art, you know what yeah, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it, it just stood out, and I think uh -huh. that led us to kind of tap in and just build a, a relationship. But um, yeah, I think it's dope that you know just hearing your backstory of you know coming to the Lord, Christian hip hop was like being your first introduction into like somebody that was genuine in the faith, which is super dope, and just kind of like you know you've been really dope, man, consistent, bro. Like you really, uh, your creativity is just amazing, just. I mean, I, I would say you, you've got some of the wittiest bars in the space. Like, you got quotables, bro. And I think it's just Appreciate good it. to hear your humble heart and how you and how far you've kind of been. But yeah, I think on the next segment, I would love to get into more of the details of like your actual music, some of the stuff you've been killing lately, and also what you're working on now. So let's um, definitely tap in on after this break. That's this good. is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm here with Tori Deshaun. We'll be right back, y'all. You hear me? Welcome, welcome back, y'all. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm here with my dog, Tori Deshaun Harris, East St. Louis own. Uh, we just chopping it up, man. Just chopping it up, just getting your getting your backstory. But we got to get into the music. I think people, um, like I said on the last segment, man, you've got some of the wittiest bars. Like, let's talk about like your creativity. What's your creative process? How do you come up with this stuff? Like, what? You, you you give me like Andre 3000 meets Kendrick meets like melodic hip hop. It's like you got a hodgepodge of different influences. Like what is what is it about you that just brings out these different like uh, witty bars and all this lyricism, bro? Yeah. Uh, I would say it's some of my influences. Like so Kanye is definitely one of my biggest. Yeah. Kendrick is my favorite rapper of all time. So I feel like he Andre Three Stacks is actually another yeah, Three Stacks is another huge uh, influence. And I got influences that, my influences is kind of irregular. Yeah. Obviously, I got the hometown joints, the stuff you listen to growing yeah. up, like, like you know, you listen to to, to the hood stuff. For Bo sure. Boosie and, yeah. and all of them. Like, I ain't listen to that much Boosie, but everybody, you know. The are you, listen, are you listening to Boosie right now? It's proper dosage. No, I'm not listening to Boosie <laughs> right now. Come is on, Boosie I, listening no. to Boosie right now? <laughs> Boosie, you know, I hope Boosie listening to God right now because you know. Shout out Boosie, man. He's, I'm, he's I'm a, praying he, for Boosie. He's a man. fun. He's a, he's a. I love Boosie so much. If, too. if Boosie found the he Lord, he remind me of one of my. He always. He actually is in. I don't know when he finna be in East St. Louis again, but he always pulling up to East St. Really? Louis to perform and stuff. Yeah, just That's to be with the people. Like he signed two uh, two twins from East St. Louis. Oh, okay. He he locked in like he always in That's East crazy. St. Louis. So well, back, well, back back to tour. Boosie yeah, got his own thing going yeah. on. We going. But uh obviously like like the the St. Louis influences like just like Nelly and like you know, not like I feel like it indirectly. Yeah, I I would I would say when I hear that, I mm -hmm. hear the St. Louis in your tone and your vernacular yeah. more than like the actual song sound. making process. Yeah, it's sound. more so like the way we say stuff. Sure, sure. Stuff like that. But I say like, yeah. Let's, but, talk, let's talk about Scam Likely. How did yeah. that song come together and what was the thought process? So Scam Likely was more so like, I think I was, I'm a slow cooker. That's how I, that's how I work. And I think I got spoiled that way from being with Brett. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of people did shotgun studio sessions. <laughs> I kind of started off 
with Brett so we could take our time. Mm -hmm. And I had a hand in everything I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like normal to me. So I, I could take a little longer. And so I would really construct songs and you sure. know how Kanye and Kendrick would be. Sure. Like all of my songs had to have meaning and purpose. So I like with Scam Likely, it was already kind of an idea I had mm -hmm. about like listening to God and and I remember <laughs> I kept getting scam likely calls, uh, scam likely calls, and I was like, "This would be dope." Mm -hmm. And so at first, I said the scam likely line like, "Okay, I picked up my phone, heard that everybody liked me. God hit my line and said it's a scam likely," and it just ain't come off like the way that I was. I was like, "It's cool," mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Shout out Velo for sending me that beat, man. Mm -hmm. But but uh, I was like, "It's cool," but it. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. It's missing something. And then Janae was in the back. My wife, shout out my wife. She always been on my music. Like, ever since we was friends, she been on my music. That's dope. Uh, people don't even know. Like, the boopy tag is her. Uh, like, she been I mean, sing she okay, sang on a couple the, of my songs. Oh, she be she singing on, yeah, she's, yeah. Yeah. And so she was in the back, and I was like, Janae, say this line real quick. Say, uh. And so she was just like, it's a scam, likely. You know, all ghetto, how she be saying stuff. <laughs> Not <so> ghetto. <laughs> I was like, when we heard it in the studio, we it. was like, oh, this it. This it. And so I chopped it. It's a You be, it's you be a, doing it. I think your, your creativity is like how you construct songs. It's like, it's just unique. You know what I'm saying? Um, even like I'm stuck on the elevator. Like, I remember when um, I think it was Hovey who first sent me that. And I was like, yo, this is wild. Talk about yeah. that song and how that came together. And yeah. Yeah, shout out Chris. He be he he like my my board for like if something dope or not, either he'll go crazy or he'll be like, nah, this ain't it. Like, <laughs> good to have some good friends in your yeah, corner, you some have, day yeah. ones. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Have, you gotta have them them day ones, man. We're gonna tell you the truth, but sure. stuck on the elevator. I'm, I definitely made that in a in a place where I was. That was a very so stuck on the elevator. I didn't write anything down. That was. Oh, uh, just like, I, remember, I remember I saw you perform that, bro, and, mm. on the beautiful tour in New York, and I was just like, "Yeah, killed it." Um, all right, one more record I gotta talk about, man. When you and Hovey get together, y'all just make some classics. <laughs> yeah, man. And I, I, I am, I am blessed to dog. be able to create with y'all, honestly, because, man, y'all, it's just fun. Like, um, hold on. So Ace is the best producer in the world. <laughs> like, no cap, he's the best producer and i'm not faking it i'm not capping he's the best producer on the planet to me what, what i hear when i when i hear when he says that is ace hey, when you gonna lock in and give me some when it, <laughs> that's all i convince hear. him right now please everybody Man, just spam I, ace work with tory ace work with tory ace ace get a single record with tory get a single record with tory ace and tory ace x tory we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we got to yeah, it's it's yeah, on me it's mandatory it's, it's blame my kids. Nah. We cousins. <laughs> we cousins, yeah. You know, Harris, Harris gang. But like, <laughs> man, talk about how like what you added to that song. Cause obviously me and Hope you had the idea, but mm. what you did to that record, bro. Yeah. Like your verses, the hook, like uh, yeah. it's a first Corinthians banger. I, I get yeah. excited to hear when Christian hip hop can literally embrace the scripture and package it in a way that's so creatively ambitious mm -hmm. and still dope. It's really hard to do. It is. Like, how did you come across? How did you do that? Like, what went yeah. in your what went go? What goes on in your brain when you're making songs like that in those bars? I, like, I think part of it is just like you just gotta have it. Like, <laughs> oh, that's true. Like, I I really do. Like, the more and more, because I used to be one of them people. Like, no nah, man, everything is learned. You can, and like the more and more I go, the more and more I'm like, I think you just have to be a relatable person like okay somebody who and, and maybe you can't learn that but somebody who who is able to take lofty concepts sure and and bring them into kind of like really dope comedians like take these super lofty yeah things and like package it in a way where you say it like them old southern people who say like three paragraphs in a sentence like and you like it, it just make you laugh i feel like that's the gift that God gave me. Mm. I really feel like I got the gift of preaching and teaching. Like, I really do feel that way. And so I think some stuff just kind of naturally mm. come to me like that. Yeah, plus yeah. who I used to listen to and all of that. I, so. mean, it, I, I, I mean, it feels like you said something that really stood, I want to draw out, like your relat relatability. Because yeah. you're essentially, I mean, even on that song, even a lot of your songs, you're literally not shying away from the faith, the gospel, the scriptures. But um, the way it's conveyed is almost like comedy in, it's like comedy 
it's charisma, but it's just like unfiltered truth too. Like yeah. this is first, we're, we're, and it's just the way you. I ain't trying to talk about strange. It ain't always fun with that part, but just like yeah. that, those moments are like, yo, this is fly. This is this is yeah. hip hop. I feel like now every yeah. everything has to be. And it's a little nugget. I feel like everything now has to be Instagram captionable. Like, shout out, if, shout, you, shout if out. you can't make it an Instagram caption, then the line don't hit hard enough. I feel like every single line mm. I try to make it to a point where your average everyday person who hear it going to hear it and be like, they going to want to scream it. Like they gonna want to scream that particular line. Yeah. Like this a First Corinthians banger. It's like I know that people just gonna want to say that. That's dope. I mean, it's you almost know? like <clears throat> you know sometimes the the old heads be try to like, and as someone who may be called an old head, I I, I don't put that on me, but I'll take it if that's <laughs> what you're gonna say. But like it's creativity. Like lyricism is has has evolved in the mm. art form and hip hop and the craft. And it is there is a beauty in being able to be clever, lyrical, and and also very like faith filled in our in our space. And it, and it takes a lot to do it. And I and I feel like you like you don't waste words on your on your bars. You do not. Tori never wastes a bar. Like every <laughs> bar is just very like thought out. And I think in a climate of hip hop specifically, when in in some of the naysayers, especially some of the people at the top and the executives are maybe laughing at the commercial plateau hip hop has been having as a whole yeah. like yo I told y'all or the 50 it's funny that on the 50th anniversary of hip hop hip hop is commercially tanking or having trouble right now I, I want to yeah, be careful yeah. how, I, how I say this Yeah. but I'm, I'm looking at the Christian hip hop artists I'm looking at you I'm looking at Hove I'm looking at No Big Deal and Indie yeah. Tribe and I'm, I'm saying hey but somebody's carrying hip hop to the next level and yeah. keeping that creativity in there not about being what it was but just evolving the yeah. genre and giving space for the art. I mean, say more about that. What you, what you think about that? I think, um, man, when my, when my, my indie brother deal said, man, uh, you know, uh, praise the Lord, make it dope. That's the whole mission. You know, like, I think that's the whole mission. I think for hip hop in specific, like, I think obviously over here on the Christian side, like content is going to be more of a, more of a focus but I think that's what the world of hip hop is just sure. kind of getting away from in general because yeah. of the the publicizing of like pushing the agenda of like be drugged up you know what I'm saying don't think about your problems don't think just don't think just it's a vibe just don't think don't think don't think I don't want to listen to the song I just want to not think and jump and it's like that's something that's kind of being kind of being pushed now. Where back then lyricism was something, yeah. even on the secular side, that was. Or, 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 I would say even to redeem it, not even lyricism, thoughtfulness. Uh, I mean, yeah, thoughtfulness. Because thoughtfulness. Like, you know, even though people may disagree, I mean, there were some J, there were some young Jeezy songs where it may not have been like you know, yeah, ho wholesome to your your spirit. But you had to feel it you, though. It was thoughtful. You had to feel like you had to feel not the beat. You had to feel what you were saying, saying. like what you was what that person and, and I, he talking. Yeah, like and I feel like know. Christian hip hop. I want to encourage you and what you've been doing, and also the people that are struggling on what to do. Like we have to be the ones that keep the thoughtfulness in our art form because God gave us so much to, to process. To talk about. I mean, the Bible is literally like, there's just so much depth in those scriptures Man. and you, it don't have to come across like how people, when they hear about theology and rap, they kind of go back to, to like how it was before. They may go back to like the cross movement days, the early reach days and they think that's, it has to be like that. Yeah. I'm, I think God gives so much grace and creativity to let it flow out of you naturally by, by the way he made you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. um, Speaking of deal, man, you recently um, been announced yeah. as the the next official member of Indie Tribe. Indie Talk Tribe about saved it. lives. Hey, Indie still, Tribe saved lives. You hear them horses? Hey, man, still yeah. holy. Still holy, man. Yeah, I, we was man. It's so much I can say about them. Right. I was already friends with all of them before I before I joined. I met Deal the earliest, then John. No, I, I met actually I met Michael the earliest. Okay. Uh, his shout out Michael first show uh, I ever did like that was like you know a thing. Uh, he DJed it so you know, and it was here in the in the A. <clears throat> but uh, Michael then Dill then John then Mowgli 
And then, um, yeah, I was I was just always friends with them. I was always tribe adjacent. And then one day, they mm. just hit me up. And <clears throat> and um, I was actually praying, like, because I was like, man, God, like, it feel like I'm kind of at this point where I'm like, I mean, do you want me to do this anymore? Like, it kind of felt like at the moment, like, certain just like certain stuff I was doing it was like I right, you know it's, it's people really rocking like I'll put it down if you want me to and um I feel like the next day uh because because I wasn't getting some stuff that I really we had this conversation yeah me you definitely yeah I, I wasn't like getting some stuff that I really felt like God wanted for me but God convicted me and he was like hmm. if you ever thought that maybe I just didn't want that for you you know what i'm saying like i got a i got a better plan than yours like mm. or did you even even mm. think to Talk include it, me Talk did you it. even think to include me in your plan like you felt like you needed something that it, it's like you ultimately put your trust in something else but me for years and i had to repent man and when i repent and when i repented and mm. it was just like man god all right you do your thing like deal called the next day he called the next day and was like Hey, bro, what you doing? I was like, man, I'm getting ready to go to this uh, gender reveal uh, with the wife. Man, it was good. He like, he like, yeah, bro, uh, what you what you think about being part of the tribe? I was like, he, he was like, man, you know, like, you, you could take time to pray about it. I was like, I already did. I prayed <laughs> about it yesterday. So Shout out God, man. I feel yeah. like the breakthrough follows, it follows the surrender. Yeah. The surrender, then the... Yeah. Shout out John, because John wanted me... John... They was like, bro, two seconds after he got an indie tribe, John was like, we need to get Tory. Like, we need to get Tory. Like, two seconds after he was an indie tribe. And so, yeah. shout out my brother. Everything's kind of crystallizing for you. I mean, even yeah. you're literally um, in, in Atlanta right now. Uh, this, you know, and, and you're on the beautiful tour um, with, with, the, with, Ho with Hovey and Big Breeze. Like, talk about that experience. How you, How's that feel? And like, yeah. Just because you're kind of having, yeah. a, in my opinion, like a, a resurgence in your in your career right now outside of the spiritual stuff which we all locked in on but like optically and statistically like literally your career is yeah it's showing some material fruit i mean yeah. how, how's that feel being on tour and all that no nah, yeah it's it's actually been very crazy like like with everything that was mm. going on a lot happened at the same time love like that mm. um the me joining well me joining indie tribe wow. then love like that then the tour, tour then getting announced at indie tribe festival while i was on the tour yeah. it's just so much happened all at one time but i will say being on tour was something that me and chris me and hovey my bad no, you, yeah, it's yeah me and me and uh Chris would talk about because me and Chris been friends, yeah. Before you, you know, since before he even came on Reach, and we would just be up all night talking. To, you know, while he was at work, you know, mopping mopping the floors Love and it. stuff. And Love so it. We, I was like, man, when you blow up, because you gonna blow up. When you blow up, bro, like just don't forget me. Take me on tour with you. He was like, nah, bro, you gonna blow. Up. We I just love this, man. And so when it was time, he was like, bro. He called me. He was like, bro. It's time, bro. We going on tour. I was like, I was like, oh, okay, that's what's up. And so we would just laugh and talk, have our normal conversation. And then when I saw what type of tour he was trying to do, I was like, I was like, oh, like, yeah, you you trying to like, <laughs> you trying to tour tour like, you <laughs> we got to tour like, bus, we got yeah, I'm like, we got runners, I'm we got five merch. seven five to seven dates nah. like something. Like he like, no, nah, I'm trying to. Like we trying to reach the people, bro. Like we so good, we man. going and so man. Shout out, shout out. That's my brother, man. Like shout out him. Shout out Breeze. Like that's my other brother. Mm. Like being on the road with them, I wouldn't. Have, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted it no other way. For mm. real, so that's so good, man. I mean, we yeah. we've said so much, man. I mean, we gotta probably put a pin in it. But one last thing um, that you want to leave the people with, man. Any encouragement or anything that you got going on that you know be people want to hear from you, man. Man. uh... Man, I just want to thank everybody who even support me. If you if you don't know me, I encourage you to get to know me. Uh, yeah, man, I just I just want to thank everybody who supported me, who listened to my songs, who I want to thank Reach just for constantly, you know, putting me on, like, you know, putting me on all of the summer playlists and giving me my first like huge look with a huge artist in Trip. Shout out Trip. Shout out. You know, shout out A, hey, shout out Cray. Like they hit me up, brought me to the A. It's 
man, it's just so many people that I can that I can thank. But yeah, I just I'm I'm grateful because mm. I should be dead in jail or in hell somewhere. But I just want to be grateful for like everything that God that God has done through my life. I'm trying to release this album in the first half of next year. Uh, really trying. I think it's gonna be a really like life changing experience for me and for a lot of other people. I'm praying that. I'm also trying to open a creative space where I'm at. Um, That's dope. Uh, at the crib, and uh, just want to encourage everybody to, you know, the mission is to is to make disciples. Uh, it don't matter if you do this or anything else, hmm. man. It's, it, that's that's the ultimate mission. That's what I'm gonna do when I get back to the crib. I think God cares about the behind the scenes just as much, if not more than sure. than, than the stage. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's something that like I can forget being in America. Like you, everything is about the stage, the lights, the money, all that. Yeah. But God cares about what happened behind the scenes. Man, well that's it, y'all. Thank you, man. Yeah. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here, signing off with Tori Deshaun. Catch y'all next time.